Okay, this is the last one and not that much because only you can judge on the robustness of your data. Uh, some people think that when they finish their master's, oh, two years to finish by coursework. Now I want to do PhD. Only take four years. I only double the number. If before I used 200 participants, now I use 400. It's PhD standard. Uh, sorry, no, it's not just amount of data, although the amount is important. The amount, yes, is important. We're talking about if everything else is PhD standard, the amount is important. You cannot claim that it's a PhD study and you do a questionnaire of 60 people. No, that I think is not enough. You, of course, need to use uh, you, you, statistics and go and calculate what is the minimum sample size. Okay, depth of data. Now, in the arts, I would think if you are using mixed method or you have qualitative data, the depth is very important. It is not just the data at the point of being collected. You see, I asked you the question, can you analyze in depth to see the layers of meaning? Even questionnaire data, you have the sections. You may have 80 questions. You have, let's say, eight sections, just to make it easy. Eight sessions, 80 questions. You can report them mechanically. Uh, okay, now we are on section B. Yeah? Let's say the language use, the main language use in the family is A. And B is not said much, how many percent, C, how many percent, and you go on to the friendship domain and how many percent and how many percent and how many percent. Well, you know, you are just transferring data from the table into your text. Uh, no, not okay. That one is very, very, very basic. No depth. That is the first level only. You have not seen what is inside the data. You have not connected this section two to section three or section four or section eight. You have to see interconnections between your sections because they are measuring variables that may be connected. There must be depth. Uh, I am guiding one student to revise her thesis because she was asked to uh, have revival -re and re-examination. So now going back, uh, well, at first she was said not to have a theoretical framework because she thought her analysis framework is the theoretical framework. So I found her a theory for her. Uh, she was guided by somebody else before this. Uh, then then uh, I, I said I will ensure that her revision will be okay. So I found a theoretical framework for her that is very close to what she, she used actually. So now I made her redo the analysis and now I guide her every week in the Zoom because she's very obedient. I asked her to do this. She really did that and we went through the writing in the Zoom session, one hour, two hours. At first only one hour, now become two hours plus. Uh, she starts to see more depth of the data and I told her, now you're seeing so many more things than you did when you first submitted your thesis. So it's also correct they made you revise your thesis because it was just not there. It had the the looks of it, but it didn't have the depth. Now she can see so many things, she can connect the, the, the results from different sections. This is the depth I'm talking about. And uh, at PhD level, it is absolutely essential. Validity, validity means, are we uh, is the instrument measuring what it is supposed to measure? Are we studying what we claim to study? If we say language use, we better study language use and not something else. You know, if we say we want to study language ability and then uh, you are not studying ability, but you study something else, uh, that is not valid already. So to assure people that the data are valid, you use a theory or you use the established um, protocol of doing things. If you are from the sciences, there are certain protocol of doing things and you know this is to measure something. But if you're doing bottom-up analysis like grounded theory, you have to make sure you do it properly and you have to be transparent in announcing all the steps. Then people can judge whether the data collected are valid or not, whether you actually did the analysis in a valid way. Lastly, reliability. Instruments, data collection procedures, data analysis procedures, are they reliable? If you yourself were to repeat the analysis, are you going to get similar results or vastly different results? And then if somebody else, let's say your supervisor is going to analyze your results using the analysis framework for the sake of publishing in an ISI paper, is the analysis going to be, uh, you know, like over 90% similar? 
So it's very important because this is where reliability is and this is where uh, the details need to be announced so that people can judge whether we are reliable or not in terms of the different collection procedures and uh, analysis procedures. This is very important. Uh, this is where you prove that your data it are robust. Okay, so with a robust paper, then you can choose good journals. So I have talked about the importance of improving research writing skills. Until now, I'm still improving my research writing skills. We never stop learning. I mean, journals have rejected my paper, but then they said uh, the paper is well written, but sorry, we have to reject it. Well, what to do? But at least I feel that now they don't say it's so crap writing. Okay, improve knowledge of the topic. This is through reading. So the advantage of publishing from your master's or PhD is that you are very well grounded in your topic. If you have done it for a few years, if you're starting out, of course, you still don't know your topic so well. Uh, which is also why as academics, we cannot keep jumping topics because when we jump from one topic to the other, there are so many new things we have to read and we have to invest time until we understand the key readings in the field inside out. You keep jumping topics, it doesn't work. Yes, I have had a number of topics. In the earlier days, it was even worse. Those days, you know, like 05, 06, when I look at the conference, I look at the theme and I collect data to fit the theme because I thought that if I don't fit the theme, my paper won't be selected for presentation. But now you know, conferences want to make money too. Whatever topic we send in, very likely you'll be accepted. So we don't jump around like that. We have to stick to a few expertise areas. Those days I jump around so much. My husband, who is in the sciences, he said, he said, I don't understand you all in the arts. How can you not even have your own area and you can move from one area to a very different area in a different paper? So after that, I thought about it. Yeah, it's so painful. Every time I start a different paper, I have to find all the readings, I have to read and understand them. No, no, no. Then I will settle down on a few areas. So that's why I later settled down on communication strategies. I really read everything those days i have to get the library to do interlibrary loan and collect all the articles from the proponents of the theory and understood everything inside out and then i came across a less read and cited paper uh, from australia and i combined them into the three into one integrated framework other people never did that so that's why i can publish on communication strategies until now yeah then i taught myself other areas okay for the sake of applying for grants um, but to get a grant, I have to read 50 to 70 articles and understand them very well in order to prove my knowledge in it. Otherwise, when people read it, they ah, don't really know the area, no need to give her the money. Okay, so I have shared uh, some things with you. Of course, there's many things I can talk about, so I will wait for your questions. Uh, basically, you have to be prepared to spend many hours in front of the computer and right until you get back ache, maybe uh, wrist pain and so on and so forth and your glasses may have to go thicker over the years because there is no shortcut to writing papers. It is, like I've told my colleagues, uh, like the hen hatching the egg, eggs. You don't sit long enough, the eggs are not warm, they will not hatch. Uh, you cannot use incubator, la, sorry, la, you know, uh, you, you cannot have shortcut. You have to sit down and write the paper, take very long, but the paper will eventually be hatched. All right, uh, I end my uh, talk now. I will wait for your questions.